Tonight, civilians at war. They just killed him! Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. The unseen and untold story of contractors caught in the middle in Iraq. I figured we were all going to be killed. And they started, you know, just bombarding us with rocks. And you can see there was a trench that was dug on the left side of the road. And I'm thinking, this is going to be bad. Also, if baseball is America's pastime, why aren't there more African Americans on the field and in the stands? For African Americans, there isn't a lot of great nostalgia about Joe DiMaggio and Ted Williams and Babe Ruth. I mean, as great as they are, what they remind African Americans of is that this was an all-white game. And echoes of the past, the anniversary of a deadly protest from another war, and what a different time it was. Today, when people talk about Iraq and all the controversy, in my mind, the controversy is nothing like it was in the Vietnam era. Tonight on Dan Rather Reports. Four years into the war in Iraq, most Americans have become familiar with the numbers. More than 140,000 men and women in uniform serving their country. More than 3,300 dead and at least 26,000 injured. These figures represent the war's public balance sheet. But there is another tally, another ledger, with which most citizens are not familiar. And that set of numbers tells the hidden story of the Americans serving in Iraq as civilian contractors. How many are there? This past December, the Pentagon's Central Command counted officially 100,000 men and women, some providing security and many others performing support services, cooking meals, doing laundry, and driving supply trucks for the military. Just like their counterparts in uniform, these often unarmed civilians serving in Iraq have also found themselves in the crosshairs of the insurgency and sectarian violence. It is one of the untold stories of the Iraq war. Hundreds of truck convoys crisscrossing the country, delivering much needed supplies to US troops. Many of the men and women in the cabs are not soldiers, but civilians, unarmed American civilians. They are part of a more than 100,000 strong force of private contractors in Iraq, doing some of the most dangerous jobs in the world. On October 28, 2004, the lead fuel truck in this convoy hit a mine. Nothing in the road and we drove by, my driver, everybody else said there was nothing in the road. Mine was planted. A soldier in the convoy can be heard on the radio as another soldier videotaped the attack. Mine was planted. No idea how. Three people hurt, two trucks totally destroyed. The driver of the fuel truck, John Woodson, a civilian from Texas, barely survived the explosion. I ran over the tank mine. It ignited and it blew me up. It blew me through the top of the ceiling of the um, truck and out um, up to 50 to 60 foot away from the vehicle. I landed out in the desert. Woodson had been in Iraq for just four months, working for Kellogg, Brown and Root, or KBR, formerly a division of Halliburton. He lost a leg and most of his eyesight. All I remember is um, several soldiers working on me at that point, and they, were, they kept telling me to stay with them, stay with them, don't die, don't go. Prior to going to Iraq, I had 20-20 um, vision in both eyes, and uh, after after these injuries, uh, now I've got 37% vision in the lower part of my right eye, and I cannot see at all in my left eye. Before the war, Woodson worked as a well-paid construction supervisor in Houston. He signed on to rebuild Iraqi oil refineries in the spring of 2004, when a headhunter for KBR offered him a job. He wanted me to go over in the, um, to work in the petrochemical industry, you know, rebuilding refineries. Um, I guess in the course of a couple months, though, uh, times had changed.